Friends, what do you say? Let's look back at two years of construction in downtown Disney and point out why this tree right here is so much more important than what you might think. I came over here in January of 2022 and I filmed all of these buildings in their current state because we've gotten a heads up, they were all gonna be demoed. So where I'm standing right now is on the farthest west entrance. I'm outside of the security zone and look at these buildings that used to sit right here. Those are two that you have probably forgot about. One was a travel agency. I believe at the end of its life, the other was where Disney was putting together balloons to sell in downtown Disney, but definitely a massive transformation here on the outer edge. And in today's video, we're gonna do some design theory about this project. Try to connect some of the missing pieces that we don't know and make some educated guesses about where this project could go. Friends, I'm so happy you showed up to look at the two year check-in of downtown Disney Ricky here, let's go. One thing I'm definitely realizing is this illustration is, uh, we'll say, generous in its placement of objects. Because currently that dirt patch that we saw from the monorail exists right in this area in here. But if this is to be the stage that already exists, they have really under-exaggerated that space because we've already seen a second one of these gazebos pop up in the back lot of the field. So definitely putting all the pieces in here, but not worried about keeping it to scale. And if we look up from the monorail platform, we can see that the new version of downtown Disney is just as close to the monorail tracks as the previous one was. But also when we look from above in the monorail, we can see that there is a lot of backstage access, a lot of space that will be used for backstage. Whereas before the movie theater ran pretty close to the edge of the monorail track, we can now see that there's definitely a generous portion of land there, probably for deliveries and backstage operations. Always interesting to see how everything gets adjusted according to what the new needs of this property is. Let's look at the monorail platform. We can see that its color has changed. One of the big things that I'm noticing as we look at our monorail footage, this tree right here, this is an original tree from two years ago. They, they saved this one. So this tree predates everything around us. And if you remember friends, I kept going on about how they were saving this tree and how that would be such an important part of the future. Not only just to be able to tell people, hey, did you know that this was one of the original trees, but also to have a placement where we can kind of see where all the other pieces of the puzzle once fit in. This tree, I believe indicates the end of the Starbucks and retail location, meaning that on this side of the tree is where we would have found the old AMC theater, as well as the massive Earl of Sandwich that used to flank the outer edge. And if you look at the old footage where the Starbucks was and the retail space next door, and then we look at the monorail shot, it does seem as if they have pushed back the opening of the downtown Disney project much, much further back. And when we look into this dirt pit, it, it looks like there's a couple of pieces of construction that are gonna happen there. They have pushed back big time where the front edge of the shops are, therefore creating way more room in the overall wide berth of downtown Disney. Could that have something to do with future plans and needing to get a lot more people in and out? Who knows, too far away to say, but they definitely have opened up this area for way less crowd congestion. I don't know who your favorite theme park vlogger is, but definitely I have to be your favorite theme parking lot vlogger, right? Who spends more time trying to entertain you in parking lots than this guy? Nobody. That's why you should subscribe to Hey Bricky and go on all of these bizarre parking lot journeys with me because nobody's given love to the parking lot but us. So it does look like we have the infrastructure in place for the new walkway that will wind its way down in front of these stores. Now here is our second gazebo from that concept arc and we can see the storefronts starting to take shape here on this outer edge. And then on the western side of the Great Lawn, we see the new massive restaurant that is being built on this other side basically taking up the entire footprint of the Western End. Now, it does appear that there will be another one of those stage performance centers being built right there. And then when we come over, if you can see that green railing at the top with the cream along the bottom, that is from the original build. That is the one piece that remained from what used to be here. 
I do believe that's the power grid that all of this is plugged into. Just an educated guess. We can count them off. One storefront, two storefronts, three, and then a fourth. So four stores or retail or dining spaces along this edge. One gazebo here, a great lawn with a performance center. One massive, massive dining establishment here. And then it appears something else showing up in the back. So current count, five new businesses and an entertainment space where one movie theater and restaurant sat. What do you think? Do you think that this is a better trade for downtown Disney than what was once here? Did you enjoy going to those movies? It was fun when you could see a movie like Guardians of the Galaxy and then go ride the ride, but this is definitely putting a lot into one space where there was only one thing that existed before. And when we look at the original footage that I shot two years ago, you can see how much more narrow downtown Disney is. And if you didn't happen to go to the movies, you wouldn't have explored any of this space. And I do feel like this space will become a big part of most guests of Disneyland's experience, either going to a store that they enjoy or going to a restaurant they enjoy. But I have a couple of questions for you. So it appears that the amount of businesses align with what we're seeing. This has not materialized yet. This would be on the back side of the construction walls. But it now becomes this plot of land in here that's in question. Now I've heard the theory that this will be where the Parkside Market goes, but I don't know. I feel a little torn. <laughs> Is that going to be built on the corner lot here? And will they build a whole new building that they're already very behind on? Or is it this final building over here on the far edge? And then they'll build out that front facade. Or one more thing for you to think about, is the Park Plaza space going to take over the massive Tortilla Joe space? Is that concept art flirting with us? How the construction project is going to move down downtown Disney? because it seems like a couple of major reasons why you should take out Tortilla Joe's are pretty apparent to me with the trained design eye and thinking like how Disney has thought, looking at the past so we can better predict the future. So a great reason to put the Parkside Market here is you keep everything in one spot. Also, it's so inviting as a walk-up counter that it would service people well that are just coming off the main thoroughfare that want to walk over and grab a quick drink or bite to eat. So it does make sense here. And if it's not, let me explain to you why I think something very similar will pop up right here. First, the scale of this building is absolutely ridiculous and completely unnecessary. I mean a massive, massive footprint for one establishment in downtown Disney. Breaking this up into several different businesses would better serve downtown Disney as well as all of its guests. And when we look what Disney's trying to do with the alley, with the bowling alley over here, as well as Black Tap having up the walk-up window, it just feels like it would make sense for Tortilla Joe's to not become one mega establishment, but instead become a bunch of smaller establishments. Because one of the things that Downtown Disney is a little light on is quick to rip locations where you can just go grab a sandwich, grab a coffee, grab a sweet and get in and get out. Not everybody wants to mess with reservations or a long dinner. Uh, we're talking about theme park time, people. We want to go fast and more locations like that would be great. I do believe that this would create a cul-de-sac of lots of different little options and add a lot of the new vibe that they're going for in downtown Disney. So if it's not here, I wouldn't be surprised if something similar doesn't come to the Tortilla Joe's location. And I also find it incredibly suspicious that the announcement of Tortilla Joe's going bye-bye perfectly coincided with the announcement of the Parkside area showing up. Now I know the name Parkside does make sense to be next to the park, but we don't exactly know what they have planned for this middle area either. So I'm not saying that it's gonna happen, but I think that it could be possible. And I definitely feel like something like that will show up in this location if it's not Parkside. And if this is the location for Parkside, because that does seem to make a lot of sense, why start it now? This is all supposed to wrap up in November 
I mean, maybe it's the final location and they'll just add on the exterior pieces. From the monorail, we can see some indication of concrete that's gonna get poured on the outside. So, so maybe that's where it's gonna be at. But if it is a whole new building at the end, I would love to know the backstory on why bring it into the project this late in the project. But the name Parkside does make a lot of sense for this location, unless we're building another park down downtown Disney. I don't know, it'll be interesting to see where this goes. Just wanted to give you a little food for thought of the future of Tortilla Joe's, because for a long time, I've been predicting that it would go away and that it would become a multi-use space, because that's just what makes sense. And here is the last remaining piece. And as if you remember, not too long ago, the performance stage set right there. Now, if my memory serves me correct, this planter was on the back side of the stage. So that stage was sitting about right here, and it is a no-brainer that moving it over to the new spot was such a great improvement because it has opened up traveling through here at night in such a great way. So this is where the Earl of Sandwich location once sat, and I have no doubt that Din Tai Fung is going to be a way better visual addition than the old Earl of Sandwich. And then this area in here, between where I'm standing in the tree, this was the AMC movie theater. Basically right now it looks just like the concept art with the monorail coming in on the backside of this project. And we have the Disney version of what looks like the different pattern walls that you'll see out in Palm Springs with not too many, just enough hidden Mickeys painted in that you don't see when you're walking by on the adjacent plane. And I am curious, will this area through here stay the way that it is with this road or will they put a entrance coming off of Pixar Place Hotel to where that project blends more seamlessly into this one? Now, it was just a, a week ago when I walked through here where you were still walking out into the street. Right now, this has made a very tight corridor, which really makes me wonder, will this still be the way we get into downtown Disney? Or is there another checkpoint, another security gate coming at the far end, making it way easier and more attractive for folks staying at Pixar Place Hotel or parking over in the Simba parking lot to slowly roll into downtown Disney without going through what feels like a bizarre backstage path to get there. So maybe an answer to my question, because as I look through that fence, not gonna film, but as I look through that fence, that's where this road ends. It's cut in half and it's dirt. So maybe there is gonna be a new, more creative, more imaginative way for us to get into downtown Disney. But I'm also curious long-term, what's the future of this parking lot? Because either it's gonna to need to become at some point a parking garage to justify its footprint and to get more out of it, or this parking garage is gonna become a part of downtown Disney to put more show in because it does feel like with removing the movie theater and opening it up into a sort of a cul-de-sac design it and does feel like there could be a plan eventually to just keep moving it forward till eventually one day it ends and exits right at the edge of the Pixar Place Hotel. The fact that the center of this project is pretty open and it aligns with this parking lot makes me think that this will open up and guests will come in this way. If not in the first wave of this project, in its eventuality, this will be the way that we come in. So this is another original tree and these are the remaining back walls from the old AMC theater. This, as I always said, they were saving it and it would give us a perfect opportunity to align after shots with before shots. And it is crazy, crazy to have a nostalgia for walking through a parking lot. But not only do I remember standing out here to get into downtown Disney in 2020, early 2021, but I also remember coming here at the beginning of 22, seeing construction happening, seeing projects come to life. I remember getting the scoop on seeing them tear out the wall over here and going into the back of the existing building. Like I have been tracking this thing for two years now, and it's just fun to see these projects come together. And I have to say, I'm pretty surprised that the Pixar Place Hotel beat downtown Disney. But then again, 
it wasn't a complete rebuild. It was just put in a new coat of paint and a new set of imagination on a very problematic structure. But man, seeing this come together and thinking about all the times coming back here filming, it's taken me back. And as this area is still the staging area where they bring in all the materials that they need to use, removing the plants and allowing this to be a way to bring everything on stage, I do have to ask you, what is the future of this parking lot? Does it become a parking garage so that it can be justified and hold more vehicles? Or does this become an extension of downtown Disney, taking the storytelling and working its way all the way over to Pixar Place Hotel, adding in the value for those guests? Or, <laughs> this is my least favorite pool, if this land all does become a very bizarre and convoluted third gate, which I think is the worst idea ever, would this be some sort of part of the theme park or some way that we get into that theme park? Man, I hope not, because that would be very confusing. How do you get here? Because let's just pretend for a moment that all of this does become one big theme park. And let's pretend that somehow this becomes a part of that. How would you get here? Like, how would you get here from Pixar Pals and Mickey and Friends? How would you get here from the Toy Story parking lot? Like, logistically, explain to me, how would you get here? If they take that plot of land and they break it up into more DCA, keep the hotels alone and have their own entry point to come in and out and turn the backside of this parking lot into more Disneyland. That all makes sense to me. And if you want to see how I think that would work out, you can check out this video right here, where I predict that I believe that Frozen will be one of the lands that comes into these parking lots and the next extension, the Disneyland.